Coffee flour is an exciting new ingredient that's delicious, really nutritious, and really good for the environment. Chef Jason Wilson is their executive chef. He's a James Beard Award winner, and he's cooked with him more than anyone else. He's here to tell you how to use it. I use coffee flour in Miller's Guild um, in chocolate cakes, uh, coffee flour waffles, our granola, um, a braised short rib dish, uh, some beef jerky that we're making, and a Bloody Mary mix. We do coffee flour tequila and gin. Coffee flour in, in baked goods can do a couple of things, but you know, to highlight, it intensifies chocolate, so it makes the chocolate taste richer, a little more pronounced. Um, when you have it with baked goods with fruits in it, so apples, pumpkin, banana, it really lends a spicy note to it, so cloves and cinnamon and anise. Um, it really gives it body and lift and flavor. And then when you look at, say, green things or acidic things like tomatoes and basil and zucchini, there it's going to add earth and flavors. So it's uh, overall, you can say it adds a spice almost. Pancakes and waffles are the easiest way to get your, hand, your hands wet with it. Um, and then, you know, let's say the, uh, the other end of the spectrum may be a cookie, so a chocolate chip cookie. Also easy way to doing it. So one of the ways to use coffee flour is to supplement or fortify um, regular AP flour or even a gluten-free flour mix. Dan Beliveau is coffee flour's CEO and inventor. He saw all the waste that the coffee industry made and wondered if there was a way that it could be used better. He's going to tell you a little bit more about the process and why you should be using it. Coffee flour is a new innovation from taking the waste product from the coffee manufacturing process and turning that fruit waste into a food that you can eat. From an environmental perspective, every year there's about 80 billion pounds of coffee cherries that are harvested. Uh, of that, almost half of that weight is this waste pulp that gets thrown out. Um, and as it decays, it gets toxic and goes into groundwater, into rivers and streams. So it's, it's quite a problem in, in origin countries. So as, you, as the harvesters are out picking, the, all that stuff is normal. They take it, they get, the, they get the fruit, they take it within 24 hours down to a processing mill to be processed. Uh, the cherries are washed, and that's a, an additive step that we've kind of put in to make sure there's nothing on the surface. Uh, then it's depulped, the green bean goes one way, and the pulp typically go to a waste pile. We take it and we stabilize it, which is sort of our secret sauce. Uh, we then have time to finish drying it, and then we put it through a modified milling process and we get what we call coffee flour. The, the three-legged stool of coffee flour is it's high fiber, 50-55% fiber, 10 to 12% protein, and gluten-free. And then on top of that stool, and these are the things that kind of vary by region and by origin, are the different vitamins and minerals that are in it, like iron and potassium and calcium, and it's really high in vitamin A. And then there's antioxidants in there as well. Chlorogenic acid, furolic acids are some of the big ones. But it's this really complex mix of compounds, some thousand different compounds in coffee in general. Uh, if you look at wild blueberries, they have eight. So it's a very, very complex fruit. There's a lot of buzz about coffee flour. Pick some up and find out why.